Hello everyone and welcome back to another Explaining Minecraft video. So in this video I want to explain item shadowing, which is like, to be honest, one of the coolest features I've ever seen in Minecraft. Like, not a feature, but like, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in Minecraft, like, in a very, very long time. So, obviously, credits first. Uh, this feature, or bug, was discovered by Fallen Breath and Process. Uh, Fallen Breath's video and Process's video would be linked in the description. So, yeah, but anyway, let's get into it. First, I think a small demonstration is in order just to set it up. You just place some stuff here. Just a trapdoor with a comparator on it. The trapdoor is used to bud the comparator. I won't do it now. I'll do it in a minute. You just want to get a chest here. And yeah, now you're all set. So you want to bud the comparator by opening the trapdoor. This doesn't update the comparator. It just puts it in an invalid state so that it can be updated later. Now what you do is you open up the chest and you put a stack in there by clicking one of your keys, your hotkeys. So by clicking, for example, the stone one, then there we go. Now, as you can see, it didn't appear that I had a stack in my first slot at the beginning. But then uh, when I opened the inventory and synced up the slot, whatever, I don't know, something like that, then this slot, uh, yeah, got updated. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, basically, now you have two entangled stacks of stone. And not just stone, I mean like anything. And this is not a dupe glitch, by the way. Um, as you can see, if you take out, like, anything, it, it still has the same amount, so, like, it's not a dupe glitch. It's better than a dupe glitch, though, because, like, uh, let's say I put, I put a chest here. But anyway, as you can see, they both have a stack at the moment, but if I take out half the stack, then you see the other one also gets removed half the stack as well, and if I continue doing that, uh, then you can see. Yeah, whatever. So basically, these two stacks are entangled. Like, uh, this stack could be, like, you as a player, right, holding, for example, a bunch of fireworks, and then somewhere in the distance, you could have some hopper pumping items or fireworks into a chest with that same stack of fireworks entangled there, right? So basically, you'd get fireworks getting pumped into your inventory through an entangled stack. This is so amazing. One thing important uh, about handling this is that you can only use the number keys to move around the stone otherwise it will break the whole thing all right but anyway now let's take a look at the code and see what makes it tick so in yarn 1.17.1 uh it's not actually the same as what was in fallen breaths video so it took me a little while to find out where it is it's in the screen handler class inside the internal onslaught click method and this is a fat method if you want you can look at what's going on here but like bruh no i'm not doing that now I know also looking at a bunch of code like this can be a bit overwhelming, so I'm going to try something in the editing to make it look a little bit better. So it's a bit easier to understand, especially if you're newer to coding. But anyway, the two lines of code that we want to look at are these two. So inside of this else statement, right here, the else statement, uh, we have slot5.set stack item stack 2. And the second line is player inventory dot set stack uh, button and item stack dot empty. So what this code is actually uh, used for is if you hover over a slot here and you click a number key or whatever hotkeys you have set up here to move a stack from your player inventory into like a chest or something. That's what it's for. So this is the piece of code that does that. And so obviously we're moving a stack from here to here, but there's two things that need to happen. Firstly, we need to put this stack, this stone stack over here, right? We need to put the stack where my mouse is hovered over. And then we also have to delete the stack from the player's inventory. So just remove it, set it to an empty stack. And uh, by doing that, we have successfully transferred a stack of stone from my player inventory to the chest inventory. So that's how the code here uh, does it. It says slot 5 that set stack item stack 2. And what that does is, as I demonstrated, it's going to make the slot in the chest have the same stack that you have, like, of whichever hotkey you pressed. Now, the set stack method is actually part of the slot class because slot 5 is a, an object of type slot. So you can see, uh, yeah, we have class slot. And it has a set stack method in here. And inside of the method, there's a couple things going on. Firstly, the inventory is setting the stack to uh, whatever stack. Yeah, now it's going to say this dot marked dirty. And what mark dirty does, uh, firstly, actually, this actually calls the mark dirty method inside of our class. So it's going to call this one right here, this mark dirty method. Um, but in this one, what it's going to say is this dot inventory dot mark dirty. And in any like block entity type of thing like a chest or something like that it's going to have a mark dirty method so inside the mark dirty method that uh, it has here the public one 
it's gonna say uh if this now world is not null so basically if we're in a world right then it's gonna mark dirty and that's the static method the protected static method here uh mark dirty we're just gonna mark the world as dirty at that position uh now at this point i don't actually know what mark dirty is uh like why they named it that way maybe i'm just dumb or something but whatever uh but then it also says world dot update comparators and the update comparators method uh is part of the world class here you can see update comparators and inside here it's basically just a bunch of stuff it looks complicated but basically we're just all leading up to this line of code here that says update uh, the neighbor of if it's a comparator so blah 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 if chunks are uh loaded whatever and if it's a comparator then it's gonna update it and we all know what happens when you update the comparator this comparator here which is an abutted state because oops uh yeah whatever i just did that uh so when i open this trap door this comparator is actually in an invalid state if i uh test it out over here you can see if i give an update to this comparator by like placing a block next to it then it's going to pop off and obviously the popping off of the comparator is going to update uh neighboring blocks such as this rail block and we know what happens when that happens we get all these rails to update called the sack overflow and in the case of the player interaction which it is a player interaction because we as a player moved the stack to the chest it's not going to crash the world it's just going to stop the tick from continuing to run the code and it's just going to wait until the next tick. So why is this a problem? Well, because this update comparator stuff, so like the comparator and all that stuff, the stack overflow exception, is going to happen when we set the stack in the chest. Now at this point, we didn't actually uh, delete the stack in the player's inventory, right? So this is what the second line of code here is supposed to do. It's supposed to set the stack in uh, the player's inventory to empty, which means that we keep the stack in the player's inventory. And you can see what happens when that happens uh, if I move the stack here. So client side, it looks like uh, there's nothing here. But if I just like update it again, uh, we get the stone here. And the reason that they're now entangled is because they have the same stack ID or whatever. So yeah, also this comparator is a ghost comparator. It actually doesn't exist there. Yeah, basically that's the whole explanation that when we set the stack in the chest, then it's going to cause a series of events here. You can see with the mark dirty whatever and updating comparators that it's going to cause a stack overflow exception and then terminate the running of the ticks so that we never actually get to the second line of code here which sets the stack in the player's inventory to empty which uh, we can see in the player inventory setting it to empty you know just that's what should have gotten run but it didn't so that's why we get two stacks and they're entangled because they have the same stack id but now i want to talk to you about crisp so you may notice that whenever i like just mash my keyboard click my mouse you don't actually hear it and that's not due to anything uh physical that i have i don't have i don't have a very loud keyboard or anything but still it's pretty like you could tell before that i was clicking my keyboard before i had crisp and crisp is basically it's a noise cancellation program and it's really cool because it just improves audio quality and yeah so it's basically like a free mic upgrade and i say free because you can sign up for crisp and there's an option to just have it for free and you get 240 minutes 240 minutes per week free of using a uh, crisp noise cancellation system so yeah pretty cool i think that's an amazing deal i personally love crisp because like again my mic it's okay my keyboard is pretty loud when like without any sort of programs and all the other ones they're trying to get you to spend money on them and are frankly overpriced in my opinion and most of them don't work as well, or even close to as well. So I think Crisp is really the way to go for this sort of stuff. So here you can see uh, what it looks like for you if you have a free account. So you can see that it says 240 minutes every week. I think that's an amazing deal, uh, especially for a free account with such high quality. And you also have options to remove noise for the microphone or for the speaker or for both. So yeah, as I said, really high quality. But then also, if you want um, more minutes per day, so like if you want it to be unlimited, then you can pay, in my opinion, a very reasonable price uh, for the crisp to have unlimited amount of uh, minutes per week. So yeah, I think this is a really cool app that I think you should get if you have anything to do with the microphone at all. So yeah, also be sure to use the link in the description so that it just tells them that I sent you there. So yeah but anyway yeah guys that's gonna do it for today i really hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more stuff like this make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye